attack them. So if everybody, I think they still have the music going. Can you turn the music? Thank you. I have a soundtrack, which I appreciate, but not right now. So again, my name is Africa Miranda. I'll be with you guys for the rest of the day. But we are now here with our panel. I'm going to turn it over to our moderator. Hey, guys, if you could uh, stripe uh, the yeah, right okay. on iPhone <laughs> okay, awesome. and swipe well, up so on Android, that would be great. So it's great to have uh, uh, it shared. You're always so late. Well, guys, if you could uh, share by swiping right on iPhone and up on Android, that would be great. I'm Carolina Lafayette, and essentially I do Euros on the end. technology for social good. Darius I work specifically with global development organizations like the UN and the UNHCR, um, Triple Up, a ton of other um, global development organizations. Thanks and, for joining um, us. And so I've been using Periscope a lot um, to teach nonprofits how they can use video like Periscope and live stream. And I also am the founder of Sourcelet, an organization that connects journalists to on-the-ground expert sources in the developing world. My, na <clears throat> my name is Darius Aria. I'm actually uh, an archaeologist, living, working, excavating in Rome, Italy. I run a nonprofit and do the occasional uh, TV show on History Channel, Africa for Africa, and so forth. But I'm really uh, interested in communicating the values of, uh, of history. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what that's about. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Derek Perrin. I'm from Scotland. I'm often traveling for the last two, ten months now, past in Vietnam, known as Entrepreneur on a Journey. Um, after business, or well, had a business that was running in Scotland, I decided to change things and uh, left for Vietnam and just had this amazing journey where I helped people, uh, I, I helped charities and worked with social enterprises, which was unbelievable. And uh, now I'm, I'm a creator of Humble Hazy Journey again, which is helping 50 charities in 50 countries uh, all across the world, which I'm super excited about starting, and it's called Help the Journey. My name is Jiro Maestro, and I sort of just walk around and try to find cool things to scope. <laughs> I hope some of you enjoy. And uh, quite recently, I've been uh, contacted by a variety of uh, teachers and homeschoolers and uh, all these people that have wanted to develop lesson plans around some of the sites that I visit and talk about them. Speaking of contact panel right here. <laughs> so I just want to kind of throw this out um, to, to any of you who can answer this about social good. How can the social good community really leverage Periscope? What are some things that you guys are seeing that, that are, are making a big difference in terms of you know, using Periscope to promote this whole concept of social good and education? Well, I'll start. Um, <laughs> I think right now the social good community is really looking at Periscope as a, as a new tool. And some of them you'll see are very apprehensive about it because they're like, oh, it's not another tool to master. I have a team of like nothing and, you know, I, I can't take another tool. Yet I understand that, you know, this is a visual medium that can be really impactful and powerful. And specifically location-based nonprofits, we have Ann Sublet from Central Park in New York um, who manages the account. Sorry for the shout out. She wasn't expecting that. <laughs> organizations, like if we're looking at a UNICEF, if we're looking at a human rights organization, social justice organization, working in Syria, working in the Middle East right now, um, we're seeing them being able to take you to places that you would not usually be able to see if you were not watching the news. And to be honest, the news does a really poor job of actually showing you the realities that aren't clipped and, and nuanced in ways that, that we probably don't even understand that well. But when somebody is scoping, um, say, in a refugee camp, um, 
in the Middle East or in South Sudan, all of a sudden you're getting a different perspective, right? You're getting the scoper's perspective, but you're also getting to see it from a very, very different viewpoint. And I think nonprofits understand that power. So whereas before they had this huge barrier to their work, right? So our, we're headquartered in the US, in New York State, for example, but we're working in South Sudan. What do we do about that? How do we connect our supporters and our donors and make it real for them, make it tangible? Because that's really all they want. They want to feel closer to the people, to the programs, um, to the organization they support. And Periscope and all their live streaming tools that we're seeing now has an incredible ability to close that gap and to ensure that you're there. So I think, to answer your question directly, um, <laughs> that's great. Um, it, it really is a huge opportunity for nonprofits who are willing to take that risk, because nonprofits do see something like live streaming as a risk, because they are accountable to their stakeholders, their donors, their hey boards. Hey guys, if you so want to share, so I'm doing but I right. Think the payoff my is phone really great, and I think it's something that Android. we're going to see a lot of nonprofits like UNICEF, um, Thanks for a lot coming of in. other nonprofits working abroad embrace live streaming as a tool for social I, I totally agree. I mean, it's the transparency and it's the informality about it that you can really benefit. And then tying into the education scene, it's inherently very educational. So people can learn more about your cause, they can see your cause, and ultimately they can participate in it. So I think those are all the, the great things that you want for a nonprofit is people need to see where their dollars are going and they like to see it on the ground. And whether it is in a far off location or it's in a local community, either way, you're benefiting, you're, you're being drawn in. Yeah, absolutely. Guys are like smashing it. It's like <laughs> transparency for me is absolutely for off, being able to go live instantly and just show somebody's plight, the, 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 the troubles that they're going through day to day is just unbelievably powerful. And for me, like, I, I don't know if you know about this, but I spent 24 hours as a homeless person in Edinburgh just to try and understand and what I did was a scope kit. And I got mixed sort of feedback from that. But for me, it was all about being empathetic with, you know, uh, with people that are homeless. But I was nowhere near where they actually were in, in their lives. And there was some real lost souls. But I was able to connect with people through Periscope, through live streaming. And I think that's what is key about this, is, is being able to, to get so close to, to real causes and get to a, 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 an understanding where we can actually do something real um, and yeah, it's, it's been unbelievable for, for my, my experience as well. Yeah, I think that uh, it's hard to add on after all these great comments, but I think it is true that the fact that it's live and that it's raw, and um, two things about it is that uh, the fact that it's interactive, and that really changes everything because the, the people really feel like they are there. And I hear this from all the time when I'm doing things, and people say they feel like they are actually there. and. Uh, and you don't get that uh, through traditional broadcasting because it can be live, but because they don't have the interaction, they don't have the control to say like, you know, what's that on the left? What's that on the right? You know, or can you ask that person, you know, you know what his favorite color is or whatever it is? So you can actually interact with the person involved, and I think that's a really powerful message for charities because then you can hey, see Esther. that uh, the pain is real, or that the or that the services are being delivered, or, or whatever the situation is, it's very, very real and very palpable. I love all that, and I, I think, uh, you know, one thing that stands out to me. I don't think she realizes. Like like she's that walking right. Now. I think for a lot of social organizations and philanthropies and charities, there's this high barrier to entry of, of putting out the word, and, and I, I would just equate it to video because when I first saw Periscope, I thought, oh, it's just video, it's just live. Like, what's the difference? Hey, Dave, right? Thanks for joining. Like my naive thought about it. But the fact that it's so simple, as you guys mentioned, and it's interactive, like you said, Zero, it's just, obviously we all know this, I know I'm preaching to the choir, <laughs> we're, we're all, but it, I just think it's such a huge thing. Um, what, I, what I think is an interesting Dude, topic, is obviously there's a lot of man. food here, I mean, myself I'm included, I'm not, um, so. I'm not part of a charity, I, you know, I, I, I give from time to time when I can, but do you guys have any recommendations, like, it is just your for the average person who wants to kind of integrate doing something in, in terms of scoping for good, or helping out their community, or helping out their Something that's really with their passion. Do you guys have any tips as far as someone would to just start off, you know, Friday and just start start doing something? Uh, any tips that maybe? I think um, random acts of kindness is, is a great place to start. So I've got a great community of, of uh, followers, oh, oh, and um, I always recommend Moderator. people just go out and do something good for someone.
become aware of that as a homeless person sat in the street, giving them change in their pocket, or just sitting down chatting with them, or just doing something nice for a friend, a family member, something like that, you know. And I've witnessed every single day people doing this within the community that I've grown, and it's incredible. It's it's for me, it's heartwarming to, to see people actually doing that. And um, do you know what? It's it's one of those things. It doesn't cost a penny, but you can do it like that. And all you have to do is say something kind to somebody. That's it. So even asking someone how their day is, it's simple. Like, but a lot of people are just tunnel vision and don't think about anybody but themselves. You know. Do you think, not to interrupt you really quick, but do you think some sobers feel like, oh, I don't want to like pat myself on the back, like, oh, I'm doing a good deed for somebody. I mean, I feel like there's kind of a fine line between, you know, saying, oh, look at me, I'm doing all this great stuff, but also, like you said, just random acts of kindness. Um, well, sometimes it's just, the, uh, adding on to that, sometimes yeah. it just happens naturally, it's not even planned. So I can give you an example of that, because early on, uh, like a few months ago, uh, early on in the, in the uh, Periscope history, uh, I was doing one of my scopes where I was just doing a, uh, like a little tour scope and I was showing Notre Dame Cathedral and I was by a bridge and a river and so I'm just talking about the history of the church and typical things and unknown to me in the forefront of my camera a woman is getting pickpocketed so I don't notice because I'm, I'm scoping the church and I'm talking about the church and, uh, and then suddenly these, these two guys come rushing in and everybody's like, what's going on, you know? Because a lot of people think, I got like, you know, maybe a couple hundred people or so watching it live. And they're like, Euro, you got to get involved. So, of course, I got involved because, of, cause, uh, you no know. Pressure, yeah, well, I didn't know what was going on either because, like, this woman all by herself and she's got, like, a, a little baby and stuff and these, these two strange guys rushing in from different directions. And uh, so, you know, I got involved and I you know, try to find out who she, who she is, who these guys are, what's going on. It, it sounded to us, because we could hear the conversation, like it was some kind of scam, because the guy was saying to her, oh, did you lose your wallet? I, I know where it is. I can get it back for you. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, they're going to charge her to give her her own wallet back. So I was like, you know, now and then somebody said, well, maybe it's an undercover cop. And I was like, well, I don't know. And then everybody's like, no, there's no way these guys are undercover cops. <laughs> um, so I, was, I went over and I talked to them. And... Uh, the long and short of it was, it turned out that they were undercover cops, and, uh, and 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 I told people before I did this, I said, well, I'm going to find out right away. It's very easy for me to find out if they're, if they're real or fake undercover cops because I've just filmed the whole thing, <laughs> so I have on my camera who the actual person was and stuff like that, and I'm going to let the woman know that I have this on camera, and I'm just going to and I told my audience before I walked over there, I said, I'm just going to watch their reaction, and if they very happy then I know they're real. But if there's any kind of like a hesitation or pause, then I know that they're, they're the fake ones. And as soon as I told her, like, well, I caught the whole thing on camera, he's like, oh my God, that's amazing. And, <laughs> and he hands me his ID, and he's like, can you come to the station with us? So I, I'm scoping this whole thing, this conversation with me and the police, and it turns out she was an American who lives in the UK, so she didn't know any French, and with the apart from the one guy who knew a little French, the officers didn't know any English. So they said, can you come to the station with us and be the interpreter for all this? And so I'm scoping this whole thing, if you can imagine. And she had to catch her um, Eurostar uh, train back to London. And so she's like so worried. She's like, well, I don't have time for this. And they're like, well, you've got to do this. So, uh, and we went to the station. And um, as it turns out, while we were at the station and we're I'm, um, translating the, the things for their interviews, they actually nabbed the, the assailants and... Uh, she got her wallet back and all her money, and we got her back to London on time. So, so the thing is, like some of the, the yeah, it was, it was a really cool story. But that's the thing is, so it wasn't like me trying to be good or anything. It just it just happened while I was there, and because we're live, anything can happen. And sometimes it's just random acts of kindness that just happen. Is that up? Is that broadcast up? Uh, well, it's from several months ago, so I still have a video of it. But I guess I'll have to upload it to YouTube because a lot of people have been asking for it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and as, as we were walking to the station, I actually interviewed the woman. <laughs> so it's poor woman. So I was like, here, now I'm going to interview you too. I know you just got robbed. And uh, so it was, it was a funny interview. But she was very nice. That's awesome. Did you guys have any comments about just the average person? Yeah, I think, you know, we all have passions, whether it's, you know, breast cancer awareness. Um, I mean, passions that involve some sort of, you know, social good, right? 
whether it's the environment, um, whether it's the Syrian refugee crisis. Currently oh, happening. You know, we're all moved by different things. And I think when we're scoping, you know, I think it, it, it's, a, it's always a good idea to have that agenda in the back of your head that says, you know, what can I do today to make the world a better place, right? So people think it's not that big of a deal to give a shout out to a charity who's running a campaign, say, you know, hashtag, you know, whatever their campaign is. Do it. Send it out. Give a shout out. Not only, not only are you doing good and you're letting people know, you know, an important thing, but people want to know what you care about. People want to feel a part That's of right. something that really matters to you. And, and don't discount that as not valuable because it's not necessarily a monetary donation. Um, because the, in the new world that we live in, in the digital age, there is a high cost to that kind of awareness. Um, and millennials are going to be the future donors, right? They're the ones that are going to be supporting these organizations. So the more we engage now, the more we lift and engage and bring people's awareness to causes that are important to you because you're the scoper, the better we all are. And the, great, and, and, and the more you're going to build your community. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a great a side effect to that, right, is that people know you care, and they want to get involved because you care. And that's how donation lines work, right? People often don't donate for a cause. They donate because they love you, and they want to support you. So keep that in mind. Most donations, a lot of them aren't because, at least big money ones, aren't. they're not giving you $10,000 because they care greatly for this cause. They'll think it's good, but they're giving because they care about you, and they want you to know that you've given $10,000 to support that cause. So a shout-out might mean another shout-out. That's huge. I, I, I just had kind of an aha there. I mean, that's, that's a good, an interesting that was I think Caroline. the, the, the kind of personal Thank part of you. service, though, people, they, they want to know that, you know, I donated and, and you know who is that. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's huge. So that that people get, there's always that like, saying of like, people get to people. Yeah. People don't get yeah. to causes. People get to people. So yeah. it kind of runs through the gamut of all of those levels. Uh, Gary, did you want to jump in too? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Just, uh, you know, you're sharing your, your values and people see who you are. So whether it's something even directly related to your professional charity or whatever you do as a, as a professional that you're advocating, you always have this opportunity, maybe because you're in a different location, maybe because you're talking with your friend, maybe it's because you have a random conversation, you have an opportunity to, to broaden out to show people what you're interested in. And I think that you're right, people are going to be interested in and when they're exploring something, even if it's not tangent, even if it's not really related to what you do professionally or what you're doing on a daily basis. Yeah. And I know when we were emailing back and forth, we talked a little bit about um, education. To kind of go back to the other part of this, this whole conversation about social good and education, um, I'd love to just kind of chat a little bit about what you guys think, sort of the, the future of education when, when live streaming is part of that. I know oh, right. Gary feel yeah, a lot of passion for that. Yeah. <laughs> heard some thoughts about that. Yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I, I just <laughs> want to know here, since I've you know, been here already a great day, who is an educator here? Who has a PhD? Who's an academic? I, I haven't yet met anyone. And as I search through and sift through uh, the community, I'm having a difficult time. And that's a, that's a shame because I think this is a great platform for um, communication, for education. Now, I have it easy because I'm in Rome, and I can get pretty much anywhere in the Mediterranean within a, within a three-hour flight. So you know, that's that's a pretty easy sell. Plus, I know something because you know I've had that academic experience. But I'm much more excited and thrilled to teach people on site. Now I can do it to anyone in the world with this great medium. Um, I'm just wondering what's holding the, you know back so many educators why they aren't here because. This is an enormous opportunity. We have something that's pretty much failed the last thing. There's something called MOOCs, which I just had a little conversation and somebody didn't know what that was. It's like these big online courses yeah, that were all the rage a couple of years ago. Wrong, but the whole thing is that nobody's completing the courses. Nobody's finishing up. So no one's getting that knowledge, but they sign up for it. With what we're doing at Periscope on their live streaming platform, you've got the inter automatic interaction, you're answering questions, you're providing knowledge, you're giving direction. So I think it's an enormous opportunity, and I think it will really grow. And this is going to be a big part of an educator's um, palette, whether it be, you know, we were earlier talking about talking with middle schools, high schools, are they doing it on FaceTime? And it doesn't matter to me what the platform is, but the point is you've established a connection with somebody, and you can create a, a very large, you know, agenda and opportunities for learning. Well, I think it's uh, on many levels, I think a lot of us would sort of say because of Periscope or of have become educators in a lot of way. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, on a small scale, as I teach social media, and other people teach, you know, their skill set. And but it, I, I agree with you. It's interesting that there's not more sort of the traditional.
traditional educators that are on fair scope at least yet. I know? mean, right now the bulk, I mean, it's like it's, it's very lopsided. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, eventually I think you have more, edu I mean, I've had a couple of teachers that got involved in it. Yeah. So the more that they see this, the more they're, they're having fun with it. And again, it's, you can then transport your student from one part of the world to another. Uh, and it can be, you know, pre-recorded or whatever, but you have lots of opportunities. Right. Yeah, and that, that, the first person that contacted me on this point was actually a parent uh, that is uh, homeschooling her children. And she contacted me, and she runs an association yeah. for other homeschooling parents. And she said, wow, you know, because I, some of the places I go are very historical, cultural, whatever. She was like, this is perfect. I want to incorporate this in, and I want to include all the other parents. So I started doing that. And then I started getting contacted from all kinds of people. says, so like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a teacher of a third grade class, and my students are really interested. I was like, you're showing your students? She's like, we're all here watching. Oh and, uh, and then, she, you know, she would moderate she her class, and like, you know, Susie's got a question, yeah. Paul's got a question. So I was like, great, I'll answer their questions. And, uh, and then I got more and more teachers. So I've got several high school teachers now that have classes around it, and uh, third grade and sixth grade and eighth grade, uh, and U.S. and Canada mostly. And the thing that was interesting is, uh, so some started getting really serious and said, well, we're actually going to develop lesson plans around it now. And so they tell me ahead of time, uh, and, and they're, they're prepping their students with, you know, background information so they come prepared. And then they actually see the thing that they've been studying. And I say, oh, this is Versailles, and, you know, King Louis Fourteenth was here. And then that's amazing because now they're actually seeing the things that they've heard about. And, you know, you can see the crown jewels and you can see the paintings and, you know, and they get, they have really good questions, so. So are you working with, I mean, are you at the point where they've reached out to you and have, have said, you know, what day do you think they'll be doing this one? Or what? Yeah, we actually we actually get to the point now where we're actually planning, and there's, so they'll say, I want to do a lesson plan on King Louis the Fourteenth, And then I say, okay, well, I can go to Versailles on such a date. And then they prep their students before yeah, I come there so they know strong. some background. And then they're seeing what they're seeing. Prepares. And then also currently in conversation with um, an association that, that works with educators. You follow so we might and That's great. they have a, a big reach, and uh, so it, it might be much bigger soon. That's awesome. Yeah. The other thing I was going to ask you, too, your, your mentor was, um, could you sing your full name? Because at the <laughs> hotels, and, <laughs> it's so funny because, like, at the hotels and everywhere I go, they're always like, Mr. Maestro. And I was like, no, you can call me your own. They're like, no, no, Mr. Maestro. I was just like, okay. Well, I wanted to just bring up your, your Dubai trip, too. Because, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, did any of you see a lot of the scope from the Anyone? Dubai? Dubai? I see one. I, just, and I, yeah. thinking, I had no idea what was going on. All these amazing tourists that were going to Dubai. And so just I yeah, thought it was related to this. Uh, oh, it's definitely very educational. In fact, that was one of the Darius. key reasons we did it is for cultural awareness and yeah. educational aspect, um, as well as the tourism. Uh, I've always had a, an interest in going there. And um, Dubai was also very interested in trying something new and bringing periscopers over there. And uh, thanks to this platform, there were some people in Dubai who had already been watching my scopes of me walking around Paris and showing Paris, blah, blah, blah. And they told their people, their government, the tourism department specifically, that why not bring Euro to Dubai and have him do what he does in Paris and Dubai. And then they started contacting me and said, you know, we've got cool stuff here too. And I was like, I know you do. And, uh, so it, it totally worked out. And then they said, you know what, why don't you invite some of your friends and uh, we'll make it a whole, you know, like a group trip, you know. And uh, so that's what I did. And I reached out to uh, amazing periscopers that I'm big fans of, uh, or a big fan of. And uh, so I, you know, was able to bring people from Australia and from Los Angeles and from Las Vegas and we all descended on Dubai. And, you know, it was an interesting experiment. And uh, the most surprising thing is we just, we just found out because they, they featured us over there in like the newspapers and the wow. radio stations, TV, and all that stuff. Um, but I just found out a couple of days ago when we came back that it was the uh, most successful um, campaign that they've ever had. So I was pretty surprised. Yeah. Well, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if other cities around the world looked at that and said, well, I mean, that's just very smart. Of oh, the yeah. The tourism department to say, hey, let's pick these people. Because you know, they're, the, they're the first ones to do this. So, I, you know, I, I give a big shout out to Dubai for being so innovative mm -hmm. and. Uh, being the first ones to do this, and I think and we're going to see culture. more. There's so many, I think a lot of, I know there's a lot of misconceptions about that culture, and so to see, you know, all my favorite periscopers were there, it was, it was just eye-opening, just personally, and I know probably a lot of you also who are watching, I was just, 
that, that, was, that, was, that was one of the goals that we were hoping is that maybe it would clear up some misconceptions, and I think it did based on the, the comments that I saw. So, Derek, I wanted to ask you a question. So, we, you would talk, you just sort of said this casually about 50 charities in 50 countries. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think what you're doing is just incredible. I think when I travel to Vietnam, I see these lots of different levels of wealth and poverty, and more so poverty. In Vietnam, nobody knew much about Vietnam other than the war. And you know what? It's a place that has amazing people, like unbelievable. And um, as I travelled and as I spoke, I just thought, you know what, this, this is really powerful. This is something that can, can do some real good. And I thought, what can I do? So I thought, well, travel travel around the world and help other charities. That's, that's what I'll do. And I thought, well, 50 would be a good start. So <laughs> Officially started um, in Edinburgh whilst um, sleeping on the street, so first help the homeless charity in Edinburgh. And what, I, what I'm aiming to do is get to really know the, the charities intimately, understanding the people that are actually suffering in the charities, because it's great us standing back and going, yeah, they've got hard lives, you know, it's, it's, it's obvious that they've got hard lives, they're on the street, but to understand them. Darcy, Darcy Network, uh, doing all, trying to build up compassion for people, and I just wanted to take just a second to shout out to the world. Well, did you want to say it? Yeah, sure. I, I do want to say it because you know we've been talking about all these like great big initiatives. Like you can do for Jake, but you can do some very small things and simple things that are so super important. And one of those things is there's really a, a big need for blood. You know, it's really vital, and there's always shortages. So you can do something as, as simple as donating blood, and you can scope about it, you can talk about it, you can go on the way, and you can encourage other people to go. So I would encourage everyone to use hashtag donate blood. I'm not being paid for this, by the way, so don't think that. Uh, although it may sound like it, totally, totally not. But it, it is a good cause. Uh, hashtag uh, donate blood, or also hashtag blood cancer awareness month. So I think it's a really good cause. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but so I thank you. I lost my best friend to leukemia in third grade. Lost another high school classmate to leukemia. So a lot of people don't even realize that for every pint of blood that you donate, you're saving three lives. It's wow. hurricane season right now. Uh, the tsunamis, you know, could have hit California or anywhere in the world. Everybody, anywhere in the world. There's accidents every day. There's and there's people that have blood cancers that need transfusions. So please, I'm just taking this opportunity to. Yeah. Do some social good. You don't have to give money, you can donate blood. Yeah, and for any of the non-Americans in the audience, uh, that means a half a liter of blood uh, saves three lives. That's great. That's great. Any other questions for our illustrious panel? Everyone's busy periscoping and tweeting. And <laughs> it's oh, I have a question, actually, because I talk a lot about this, and I would love to hear advice from you all because you're actually doing it. A lot of people sit at home, and they feel like, what can they do? And I think it's, you know, that something easy that people can do, especially using a platform like Periscope, to spread the word or, or you know, anything, to really to be socially active on these platforms. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think you have, whatever it is that you're passionate about, I think it's important to take that moment when you're on scope and say, hey, you know, my charity is running the campaign, just like what happened here, right? Do it on scope. And I think, you know, we, we touched on it a bit before, but People want to know what you're passionate about. People want to know 
that you care about something. So it's 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 a double bottom line here. They're getting the benefit because you're you feel closer to them, but your charity is also benefiting from them, right? So it doesn't have to be a charity. It can be a social movement, um, a hashtag that needs to be promoted because you're trying to build awareness. It can be a million different things. Um, but I think to be able to share that and to be honest about what your passions are beyond you know social media is is something that. <laughs> I get, but you know, I think I think it allows an open door to connect with um, your followers and your viewers in a new in a really new way that can inspire others to do better and be better. So. It's, a, it's also a two-way street. So you're following somebody, you're following Euro, and then hit them up, obviously. Like and people do. Yeah. So <laughs> and, 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 and do that. So if you're just getting started, but you have something you're passionate about, say, I think I have a connection with this person. I'm going to bring this up. Well, this person's in another part of the world. Maybe they're not aware of X. And then those people, I think, would uh, reciprocate. Those people would give you a shout out. Maybe those people would learn something new. Um, I'm always looking, you know, for for doing something new in Rome. I'm I'm showing a bunch of old stuff. But uh, it's a dynamic city, and uh, and I think that that conversation that goes back and forth leads me to uh, new directions. I think that's why uh, the platform is so successful. You know, and I'm just going to say it works in both directions too because. For instance, one thing I'm very passionate about is free speech. And so some people know that from my writings or blogs. Or so they will contact me and let me know about instances that I didn't know of where there's an abuse or something taking place. And they say, hey, can you, can you let more people know about this? And then, you know, I usually do a little bit of research to make sure. And, and then I start talking about it. So, uh, so it works in, in both directions. And we just have one question. Um, yes, I was just curious. So um, I'm on the social council for Team No Kid Hungry. And so, and we've been doing a couple camp. We were used Blab most recently, and we've used live streaming. And the collaboration between you guys mentioned that I just wanted to highlight that the collaboration between streamers. You know, Alex Khan came in and, re and just reshared it to his followers and one of my team, No Get Hungry. We got the largest donation of the day by simply that little gesture. And last time I checked, it doesn't cost any money to share it with your followers. So I think also. <laughs> Kind of that, uh, that power, that power of we. Sorry, I, losing my voice apparently. But yeah, that's, I, I love the message. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.